this week. On days of our Steelers, the Steelers look to honor Ben Roethlisberger in what is most likely his final home game at Heinz Field, coming off of a 36-10 shellacking that took place in Arrowhead Stadium last week. The Steelers are 7-7-1 seven, seven, and one entering this game, and although this looks like a huge game on paper, unfortunately the Cincinnati Bengals clinched the AFC North and the Los Angeles Chargers won, officially eliminating the Cleveland Browns from playoff contention. However, the Browns are looking to play spoiler and destroy the Steelers' playoff odds. Even if they are small, they are still possible. And the Steelers, well, they're looking to honor Ben and survive another day. This is a huge game, not just for the Steelers, but for the NFL. A quarterback, he was drafted in 2004 and has never had a losing season and has spent all 18 of his NFL seasons with one team, is playing his last home game at Heinz Field. 18 years of home games have led up to this moment. And my goodness, if the Steelers team doesn't play with heart tonight like they do on some days, aside from Ben Roethlisberger and a couple of other players, then you best believe that there is something wrong. And it's fourth down and the Steelers were not able to convert so the Browns will take over, and they hand it off to Chubb, something that you might see a lot today, and Nick Chubb is going to go down the field for about a gain of a little over 35 yards, I'd say, a first down for the Browns at the around the 38-yard line, third and seven here, Mayfield, he senses the pressure, he just has to throw it, and it is incomplete, going to lead to a fourth and seven for the Cleveland Browns. And the Browns, the last time they played here, they ended Pittsburgh's season in a 48-37 to playoff victory. It's batted down. Cameron Hayward on 4th and 7. Mayfield had a man open for a first down for sure. It looked like he was going to make the throw, but Hayward says not today. And the Pro Bowl defensive lineman gets the job done for the Steelers on defense. Once again, just like Ben, he's really a person that embodies what it means to truly be a Pittsburgh Steeler, the culture that they truly speak of, and not the underperforming against inferior opponents that you sometimes see with this team that has often become the standard that Mike Tomlin refers to. As Najee, he's being fed tonight, and Deontay's going to catch that ball on third and ten. Why did you throw it at the line of scrimmage? You see this way too often. Every now and then I get it, and this is incomplete on fourth and five. The Browns take over. But every now and then throwing it at the line of scr scrimmage on about a third and ten, I get it. They're not expecting it, but the Steelers do it almost every single time. And honestly, like, th th they're limited by their play calling, which doesn't help because it's not like this is the Patrick Mahomes-led offense. No, this is the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. And I love Ben, but you can't, you can't limit Ben because Ben is already a limited version of what he once was. You can't limit him even more if this play calling second and three and it's going to be caught by ray ray mcleod the man who follows me on twitter is going to get the first down second and five ben pump fake he has one of the most notorious and if not the most famous pump fake that has ever been seen how does he hold on to some of these balls i swear and claypool gets the catch and on third and ten they threw a bubble screen that looks like something fake would do and there goes a shoe flying out of nowhere and there's most likely going to be a penalty called on that and it looks like Claypool's shoe has just been removed from his body. And no, it, this is not the Florida versus LSU game from last year. And speaking of which, you see Hossener right there. He's playing center today for the Steelers. Kendrick Green is not. He is out. So if the offensive line performs better, which so far it is, it'll. you have to wonder, even though Green's a rookie, like... Is he, he's the core of the offensive line. So is he, I know he's definitely part of the problem because he's young, but is that something to be concerned about? Should we not play green and let JC get the start center again? We'll have to see. Second and three, handoff to Najee Harris. Najee's going to get the first down. He's going to get tackled about the five and a half yard line. First and goal for the Steelers. And oh my goodness, it's a touchdown for Deontay Johnson. And after five weeks of having absolutely nothing to speak of, no points in the first half in the past five games, the Pittsburgh Steelers have done it. Pinch me and pour some water on my face because I must be dreaming. The Steelers are winning and they score points in the first half. This is not a drill. It's intercepted. Akilo Witherspoon showing why he should be re-signed by the Steelers defense and Steelers organization next year coming down with the pick for baker mayfield and you can play the progressive music because you better believe that the browns this season in the playoffs are going to be at home with baker mayfield and maybe if they cut them they'll be on the road in baker mayfield's van driving around the country because it's where it's where he's going to be living because he has just screwed his opportunity that he's had with this browns team i get he's slightly injured but that's not the reason for his terrible judgment and Ray Ray McLeod's going to catch it for the first down. Holds onto it. Nice catch by McLeod. Third and goal for the Steelers. Ben drops back to throw. It's going to be thrown and incomplete. Pass was intended for Kevin Rader. 
Boswell up to kick it, and it is good. So not only have the Steelers scored points, but they have scored twice in the first half, and they have the lead. This must be a miracle. The Pittsburgh Steelers are actually playing with heart, and what do you know? They're playing good football on both sides of the ball. Third and 11. Mayfield throws in, and it's going to be caught by Donovan Peoples-Jones for the first down. Second and nine for Mayfield. Mayfield throws it again. Jarvis Landry is going to get out of bounds after about a gain of seven. Third down and two. Huge play here for the Browns. Mayfield's going to scramble, and no! He does not have time. He does not see T.J. Watt. And the Defensive Player of the Year candidate gets the sack. The Steelers get the ball back. What do they do with it? And Fryermuth was able to evade the tackle for the first down. Nice play by Pat Fryermuth. Third and six. Ben probably could have scrambled with that, and it is intercepted. But, I mean, what the heck? If you're going to have a ball be picked off, it might as well be in a time like right here where it didn't truly matter regardless of whether or not the football was caught or not because most likely this would have been a very long field goal anyways. So, I mean, yes, it sucks, but at the end of the day, if you're going to if you you're gonna have to throw an interception, it could be right there. Najee's going to break free. He stiff arms a man, and he just casually does this. I mean, this is casual stuff for him. Absolutely destroyed that man's career. Sit down. Najee Harris just showing everyone on live TV, national TV, Monday Night Football, why he is a true talent, and Johnson is able to pick up the first down. Steelers are driving down the field, second and five. He dumps it off to McLeod. McLeod's going down the sideline, and that is going to be a first down. Third and ten here at about the 14-yard line for the Steelers. Ben's just going to throw it to Fryermuth, and this is, uh, once again, I mean, I under uh, Ben's the type of teammate where I don't think he's going to stand up to the coaches too awful much. Right, he can have a say, but he, if he says every single play, every single third down, hey, why are we calling these plays? He doesn't want to seem like that. He doesn't want to seem like a narcissist and a bad teammate. So it really questions me, you know, why are we calling these plays and Chubb getting the ball second down and three? I mean, we just do it every single time. Third and long, we throw it at the line of scrimmage or barely above the line of scrimmage. Hope that they break seven tackles. That's not optimal. And on third and seven, Mayfield is just going to scramble, probably gain a half a yard, maybe a yard. And fourth and seven, just this Browns team is hopeless right now. And Ben, Ben is brought down by Clowney. He made some comments about the game about um, Ben and trying to give him, you know, um, not, not necessarily a memorial, but a way to mem remember him in Pittsburgh and do it the Cleveland Browns way, which is basically saying, hey, we're going to beat Ben. So let's see how that goes for you, Jadevion. You already threw a shoe like a five-year-old and Njoku oh man that's a touchdown nice catch by Njoku for bringing it down he definitely had the height advantage over Joe Hayden the former Cleveland Brown who many people are seeming to forget but he easily this easily could be his last game in black and gold at Heinz Field as well and third and nine and it's not like it was going to be a first down anyways but McLeod's not able to come down with it first and ten you see the Steelers play calling has held them back up to this point, and that's going to be sacked by a half-sack share by Loudermilk and Alex Highsmith, who is having a great game tonight, along with TJ Watt and the rest of this defensive line, and Mayfield is going to dump it off to Hooper, and he actually caught the football this time, and he didn't fall after he caught it, and that's going to be a first down for Austin Hooper. But you would really think the Steelers have been dominating, but they're only up by 13. I mean, how? How is this the case? Well, their play calling limits them. And they're, they're not, they can't be limited. You see, this can happen. They could, the Chiefs can have a bad offensive coordinator and they could still win a game pretty easily against most teams. The Steelers just cannot do that. Third and 20, Mayfield incomplete first down for the Steelers. They're going to get the football. And Harris is just keeps breaking tackles. He's going to get a first down. Wow, Najee Harris. He just will not stop. He almost always falls forward. It's just, the, I love watching this man run the football. Third and two, Najee gets the first down, and you can call it almost a guarantee that Najee Harris is going to get a first down tonight on a third and short situation. Third and eight, Ben not able to make the throw, Deontay not, not able to make the catch, but Boswell, from 50 yards, the kick is good to give the Steelers a 16-7 to lead, and Highsmith is going to tackle Chubb behind the line of scrimmage. And that's going to make it a second and 12 here for the Browns and Baker Mayfield. Mayfield, he is sacked. It's not Bud Dupree, but you better believe that it is the man. It's Tuska. I don't even know how to say his name, but it looks familiar and I somewhat know him. And even though Bud Dupree was arrested for having some, not arrested, but he has assault charges against him right now because he supposedly assaulted someone at Walgreens, one of the cashiers at Walgreens, we have a different 48 on the field right now, and the Browns play, that's going to get held back by a 
holding on Wyatt Teller and the flag's out again. And that's going to be a false start on the offense. That one's on Willis. And here we have a brief intermission with our boy, Tom Brady. Hopefully he retires soon. No offense to him. But wow, seeing him go, by the way, that's the, this was included because just seeing him go, like if Ben's getting this memorial, imagine what Tom Brady's going to get, especially if he was still in Tampa. And, and Claypool not able to hold on to it. So third and three turns into fourth and three. Less than six minutes to play. Boswell's going to get sent out on the field to make it a 19-7 game. And you better believe Boswell's coming in the clutch. 19-7, baby. Let's go. And really, the Browns just trying to have one last gasp of life. They need a touchdown here if they want to keep this game alive somewhat. And Mayfield is going to be caught. And it's going to make it a second down and two. Mayfield drops back. He's being pressured by Watt. And he had absolutely no time. He shed that block just like someone shed their cheese in Green Bay because you better believe that the Pittsburgh Steelers are in Mayfield's head. And there's another sack by Alex Highsmith. Louder milk there shortly after. And the Steelers force a fourth down. The crowd's loving it. I'm loving it. I am loving the way this team is playing right now. Fourth and 19 Mayfield going deep and he cannot connect, but there is a flag on the field. And that's going to be a pass interference on Joe Hayden. Gives the Browns the first down, so it sucks. It's not something that you want to see, but overall, this game should be over, right? I certainly hope so. Third down and 10. Baker Mayfield, he's scrambling. The ref has to get out of the way, and there's nobody there. It looks like Mayfield's going to be able to scramble for the first down, and he is probably about a gain of 14. Two minutes to play here. Mayfield throws it to Richard Higgins, and it's going to be caught. Fourth down and two. This, If they don't get this, the game is over. Mayfield throws it, and it's caught. You better believe in garbage time. Baker Mayfield can lead his team down for a touchdown, except all of the six times that it was a game-winning drive for a win in a game that was... It's still technically doable, but in a game that was actually doable, you better believe Mayfield doesn't do crap. That's the Cleveland Browns way. Mayfield scrambling, and it is going to be... Incomplete. But there's a pass interference on Sutton going to result in a first down for the Browns about the one and a half yard line they hand it off to Nick Chubb no they don't it's going to be wide open into the end zone that is a touchdown for Cleveland and this game technically is not over I'm pretty comfortable but man this onside kick coming up is going to be really really something that's a touchdown for Bryant can the Steelers recover it and they can and they are a first down away from keeping their playoff hopes alive and giving Ben what he deserves tonight. And that is a win in his final home game. Hands it off to Najee. He's going to get the first down. He's going to shut the tackle. Najee Harris is going to keep running. Can he get to the end zone? You better believe it. Najee Harris is in the end zone for the touchdown. And that is the icing on the cake. Ben Roethlisberger is going to win his last home game at Heinz Field. He is giving Fry Muth a hug. He is giving Gentry a hug. He is giving everybody a hug because Najee Harris has just sealed the deal. But it sucks that he, you know, Ben can't take that final knee as time expires, right? Going to need a miracle for that to happen. But don't worry because we have Baker Mayfield and we also have Trey Norwood. And that is going to be an interception. And Ben probably thinking he wouldn't step back on that field again is going to step on that field one last time to kneel the football thanks to Baker Mayfield being unlucky and also being just terrible. Not on that throw. And Trey Norwood doing his job. What an interception. Ben takes the knee and this game is over. Emotions just running through the crowd, and this was just a beautiful scene. So in terms of the playoffs, the Pittsburgh Steelers need a win on the road against Baltimore. Whether Lamar Jackson is playing, we are not aware of at the moment. However, it is safe to say that Lamar's only win against the Steelers was against Mason Rudolph and Devlin Hodges, and they won in overtime. And I honestly don't think they would have won that if Marlon Humphrey hadn't stripped Juju. And that was, I believe, in week five or six of the 2019 season. But every single time Lamar Jackson has played the Steelers, against, against other teams, he goes off. But against the Steelers, he's never quite done that. So whether it's him, Tyler Huntley, we don't know. But what we know is that the Steelers get this win, then all they need is for the Jacksonville Jaguars, who, if they lose, will have the first overall pick for the second year in a row, to beat the Indianapolis Colts in Jacksonville. And I'm not a true believer in tanking when it comes to the players right? The, if you're an NFL player, you want to step on the field and win because it's your job. It's your passion, you know? 
However, and it says right here that Jacksonville has about a 21% chance to win. However, if we have to look at the positives of this, right? The Colts lost in Jacksonville last year. Now, I know this was last year. Just in terms of the past, the Indianapolis Colts have not won in Jacksonville since 2014. The Jaguars only win last year against the Colts. This was a division rival opponent that you're playing. The Jaguars are playing a division rival with a chance to ruin their playoff season. You have Carson Wentz, who he's been pretty solid this year. You know, I'd say Jonathan Taylor has a bigger role in the offense, obviously. But he, Carson Wentz has been pretty solid. I'll give it to him. But when it comes down to can you do it in the moment, Carson Wentz, as of late, with the in his in his last year at the Eagles, can he bring his team to victory in crunch time? He hasn't been able to do it. Now, if the Jaguars can keep it a close game, man, this is really going to be something. Because, like I said, I don't believe in tanking when it comes to the players. I think the players are there to win. But the coaching can limit them. If for whatever reason the coaching wants to tank, which I can understand why, obviously. Because if they lose, if they win and the Lions lose to the Packers and Aaron Rodgers wants to play in that game, then the Lions would have the first overall pick and not the Jaguars. Now, what's the difference between Thibodeau and Aiden Hutchinson? Not much. They'll probably end up getting one of those two players regardless if they have the first or second pick. But the coaching can limit, if they wanted to tank, they could limit the performance on the field by play calling by execution, by the formations that they put out onto the field. Because not, you know, you can't just yell at the coach every single play because then it'll give them a reason to not like you, to release you, to put you down the depth chart unless if you're a star player or a key player on the team at least. So will they do that? I don't know. But we have to worry about what we can control and even if the Steelers lose. I mean, we even if the Steelers lose and Ben Roethlisberger doesn't play that well, you have to look at what you saw last night. You have to look at this final home game and say, wow, this is truly special. And if this is the only time Ben's going to be serenaded like that, because, I mean, he won't get that much love in Baltimore, let's be honest. I think he'll get, you know, if... You know, there might be some respectful Ravens fans who applaud him. There's going to be some a, a, a ton of Steelers fans there. I already know that. But if Ben loses, you can't say that he went out the wrong way. He's never had a losing season in 18 years of being the quarterback. The worst we have ever been with him is 8-8. Eight and eight. I mean, you ha that has to mean something. What you saw on your screen was poetry in motion. The way that game ended, it was like destiny. That was something that you see from a movie, and it happened. And for what Ben Roethlisberger has done for this city, for me personally, for this team, for this franchise, for the people of Pittsburgh, and for fans who love the NFL despite what you may think about his past actions, I, in my opinion, I know I don't know him personally, but you can tell he's a changed man with the way he is as a teammate, with the way he is as a person, a player, a father, and everything that he is. You can just tell that he's a changed man. Personality-wise, he's a completely different person than he was 11, 12, 10 years ago. And that's something that I'm very proud of Ben for. And he's always been my quarterback, and he always will be my quarterback. But it is, I agree, it is time to go, and it's sad to see. But Ben Roethlisberger, the scenes that you saw with his family, the scenes you saw with the fans, the scenes you saw of him going into the locker room, sitting on the bench, crying with the interview, just everything that you saw, it was just all so emotional. And I'm, I'm glad that I was able to have the privilege to watch this man play as I grew up. But just like the Steelers staying alive, and hey, I've seen crazier things happen. So are the days of our Steelers.